For the last 20 years, Ardman's hidden away a ghastly project from Wallace and Gromit that very few have ever heard of. But today, we are going to finally unravel the mystery. Stare upon the nose. Okay, I think I'm going to need a wee bit of help on this one. And I know just the lads to help me out. You alright, chaps? Hey, -o. You alright, boys? So, I was kind of wondering if you all wanted to do a collab about a shared interest. Oh, what would that be about? Hang on, I'll send it over. Oh god, another one. So, the origins of the stage show... What's all this about? Anyway, the origins of the stage show began in 1996 when director Andrew Dawson saw his young boy enjoying the wrong trousers and it occurred to him that this could be easily translated for stage. The director had already worked with Ardman in the past and in turn they were aware of his previous theatrical adaptations of Thunderbirds and The Three Musketeers. With this in mind, he approached Ardman with the concept of a Wallace and Gromit stage show. This led to a conversation with Nick Park himself, who was curious as to how exactly the plasticine duo would translate onto stage. Dawson's response? I haven't the foggiest. <laughs> Which must have instilled some level of confidence as Nick Park gave Dawson the go-ahead for the stage show regardless. Allegedly, this trust was placed in Dawson as Ardman admired his previous works, with the Thunderbird stage show in particular standing out as entertaining for adult audiences as well as children, which aligned perfectly with Ardman's vision for Wallace and Gromit, as they didn't want people running around in big costumes. The stage show was on tour from the start of 1997 till the end of 1998, though despite its relative success, the production has fallen into obscurity over the years. In fact, this is quite possibly the first you're hearing of it, despite the Wallace and Gromit film franchise being pretty well known. That's because for about 20 years after the stage show concluded, there was no known information or footage regarding it that could be accessed online. It's not until very recently that more of this lost stage show has been unearthed. Wallace is on stage of the local playhouse, preparing an invited audience for the public unveiling of his latest invention, the Mark I Panathetrakon. It's a fully automated theater with added add-ons house in a caravan. Wallace tells the audience that he invented it after he joined the West Wallaby Amateur Dramatic Society, or Watts for short, with two W's. Just want that to be clear. Moving on. <clears throat> It contains somewhere within its high-tech circuitry a brainwave activator that relays an entire role to an actor through a headset that they have to wear, meaning that they never forget a line again. It also has a theme generator, which can switch themes from musical, to western, to even thriller at the drop of a hat, and a costume rama, allowing instant generation of the appropriate costume for whatever theme has been chosen. Aided by Gromit and Sean the Sheep himself, Wallace begins his demonstration. At the press of a button, the entire caravan unfolds itself onto the stage, providing an acting area, a backstage area, and a place for the musicians to sit. Wallace's attention gets diverted when Wendling Ransbottom turns up in the middle of his demonstration. She tells him that she wants to be friends again, following after the event of a close shave. As well, she brings along a large box where she whips out from it a newspaper. They read that Feather McGraw has recently broken out of prison and he now wishes to enact on his revenge. On the pair that took him to justice, Wallace realises that it's him and Gromit. As the demonstration of the Mark I Pantrisicon continues, Gromit suddenly believes that he's Wendelin. He then hops inside the machine to try out the costume Rama. He comes out wearing a tutu, dancing to the Sugar Plum Fairy. Moments later, the costume Arama forces him to dress in an opera garb, a cowboy outfit, along with burlesque and folk dancing clothes, 
as there's obviously been some kind of malfunction. Wallace, Wendelin and Gromit go round the back of the caravan to fix the Pantheatricon. Whilst they're gone, Wendelin's abandoned box opens up to reveal Feathers McGraw. It appears that the immoral avian has hypnotised Wendelin into being his servant, in a bizarrely convoluted scheme to get his long-awaited revenge on Wallace and Gromit. While Feathers McGraw hides somewhere backstage, Wallace returns to the front of the auditorium with Wendelin and tells the audience that everything is now ready for a complete run-through of a theatrical production using the incomparable resources of the Mark 1 Piafatricon. Although normally reluctant to appear on stage, Wendelin agreed that she'll join in, although we already know that she's under the control of Feathers McGraw. Wallace sets about choosing the book as the basis for their experimental theatrical performance. He decides against the silence of the lambs, probably very wisely, and chooses instead a classic Victorian mystery in the style of Arthur Conan Doyle. The book is inserted into a slot in the Pathetricon and its plot and characters are analysed and dramatised. The Costurama springs into action, Kin walls out as a dear Dr. Clad detective and Gromit as his untiring assistant. Sean's responsibility though is the provision of sound effects, but he keeps getting them wrong, forcing Wolves and Gromit to, well, improvise. Wallace and Gromit travel from Baker Street all the way to Wensleydale Moor as they assist on a case for Lady Wensleydale, who her husband has recently disappeared under mysterious circumstances, and their cheese brand has recently been coming out as red as if it was blood. The entire production is thrown into a contemporarily confusion, as Wendelin's penguin hypnotic trance wears off, and she realises that she can't continue as the role as the local barmaid. Gromit takes over, but then discovers that he can't play both the detective's assistant and the barmaid at the same time. So, Sean the Sheep takes over as the barmaid. Feathers McGraw is forced to come out of his hiding place to re-hypnotise Wendelin, so that she can continue acting on the stage, where she keeps trying and failing to kill Wallace on the penguin's behalf. The detective and his assistant make their way across the moors to Wensleydale Hall. It's here that Sean the Sheep makes a reappearance as the resident butler, named Lambsbottom. But Feathers McGraw masquerades as the sheep in an attempt to poison Wallace and Gromit. The pair go to their rooms intent on getting a good night's sleep, before attempting to solve Lord Wensleydale's strange disappearance. However, a hypnotised Wendelin tries to kill them once more, although they're not actually asleep, so yeah, they're good. During a dramatic nighttime chase scene through Wensleydale Manor, the detective and his assistant pursue a mysterious hooded figure. Whilst in some fourth wall breaking shenanigans, Feathers McGraw uses the Mark I Pantheatricon to keep altering the theatrical style of the show. Although Wallace and Gromit are none the wiser, led to believe that the machine is just malfunctioning, as Wallace's inventions often do. The chase finishes with the mysterious hooded figure, actual Wendelin in her role as Lady Wensleydale, escaping through a hidden door in the library. Our detective and his assistant, actually Wallace and Gromit, follow her to the moor, where Wendelin and Wallace break out of their roles and share a romantic moment. Alone. Feather McGraw arrives on stage disguised as the detective's assistant. He sneaks up and hits Wendelin with a stone, knocking her down. Wallace, seeing this in action, believes that it was Gromit that hurt the woman he loved. By consequence, Wallace fires Gromit from the play. Wendelin, still under the control of Feathers McGraw, persuades Wallace to switch the Mark I Pantheatricon's theme to Cops and Robbers. Feathers McGraw and Wendelin then start taking valuables from the audience, who are supposed to think that this is all part of the action, though Wallace realises that something's afoot. During a confusing finale in which the Pantheatricon keeps switching themes, Wallace confronts the Penguin, who attempts to kill him in a kebab slicing machine. <laughs> but luckily Gromit arrives just in time to rescue his master. A chase ensues, as it almost always does, and the penguin's schemes are undone when his own bomb explodes, blowing him conveniently back into prison once more. Wallace apologises to the audience for the chaos on stage, and Wendelin, now recovered from her hypnosis, resumes her bittersweet romance with Wallace.
In 2021, in a Twitter thread by J.W. Cartoonist, a user by the name of M.K. Ince rediscovered that the book, The World of Woes and Chromat by Andy Lane featured images of the stage show. But the user only uploaded very low quality pictures on the internet. No further developments would happen on the search for the stage show, not until March 2022. When I came across a post on the Lost Media Wiki Discord discussing about the show, from there, myself, Menz and Robbie were successful in finding the contacts for people that were involved in making the show. But unfortunately, we were unable to get a response back. And after creating a video on the subject, the search went quiet for a little while. On June 20th of 2022, Twitter user Milkman created a Discord server for the search. And from there, the team were able to acquire the book, The World of Wallace and Gromit, and scan the pages of the book at a much more higher quality resolution. It was additionally discovered that the book provided quite a lengthy explanation on the plot so far giving us the best insight of the precise details of the play. The team have gone on and collect other pieces of physical media to scan about the play, either being pamphlets or newspaper clippings. In November, a vintage Blue Peter clip was discovered on YouTube, having been uploaded on the 14th of August by Adam's Archive. The clip features a short interview with Nick Park discussing the upcoming release of Chicken Run but briefly touches upon the then touring stage show. Additionally, one of the Blue Peter presenters is wearing the actual techno trousers from the stage show. It was then discovered that this particular episode was broadcast on the 26th of November 1997. Adam had initially given the incorrect date of 1998 in error, likely going off Nick's quote in the video, stating the chicken run was due to be released within the next two years. It's currently speculated that this Blue Peter episode features footage of the actual performance, with a number of users online recalling that they saw the actors in the costumes, but this has yet to be confirmed so a lot of research effort at the moment is to try and relocate the episode. It might have been possible that Adam's archive might have it, but there's no way of contacting them since usually their comments are turned off and there's also no social link either. It was also hoped that the BFI may have had the episode to preview as they usually do with BBC programs, but the team's effort into looking what's available to pre-book, it doesn't seem the episode is available at all. But on the 11th of November, we reached out to the actress who played Wendelin, but she didn't respond, not until the 18th. This is when we discovered that she was in the revival of the play, meaning that there's technically two different versions. But the only major difference is a change with the Wendelin actress. She also mentioned that she stood in contact with the director and one of the cast members, that being the performer who played Sean the Sheep, and had said to send over the questions through email, which we have, and that they would respond as soon as they could. And 10 days later, she responded by showing us a newspaper article about the performance and a piece of merchandise from it. We mostly asked her about her experience with the play, which was very positive. She amusingly remarks about the hairpiece she wore was the equivalent of wearing a heavy helmet. Although alas, she didn't have a copy of the script. We know that the original West End version would have been the one that would have most likely been recorded, while the revival version may have been, but unfortunately we haven't been able to back this up at the moment. By the end of December 2022, YouTube user Donald Bloodworth, who had been researching the play since 2018, was successful in contacting the director and managed to obtain some new images from the show. But most surprisingly, a small model prototype of an actual set piece. This is theorised to be the Pantheatricon going off the book summary. The year concluded with the Discord team uploading their findings and creating an article on the Lost Media Wiki to document their findings. Thank you lads for being involved, I couldn't have done it without you. Uh, hang on, oh, oh no, oh no! Scribbles? Are you okay? <laughs> Good grief.